Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Massa Tutorials. Please do well to subscribe to my channel so that whenever I post any video on YouTube, you'll be the first to get it. All right. Now, let's move on to our new topic, the right angled triangle, Pythagoras theorem. The right angled triangle, Pythagoras theorem. The right angled triangle, known as the Pythagoras theorem. So let's read some brief, or let's see some brief history on this Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem was developed by Pythagoras. Pythagoras. So Pythagoras is a name of what? A mathematician he brought about what this concept so the Pythagoras theorem was developed by what Pythagoras a Greek philosopher and mathematician who lived during the 6th century BC the Pythagoras theorem was developed by Pythagoras that's the name of the mathematician a Greek philosopher and uh, Matthew Mathishen, who lived during the sixth century BC. All right, so let's pro let's proceed on today's topic. Let's proceed on today's topic. Notice the Pythagoras theorem states that the sum of the squares of the length of the two shorter sides of a right-angled triangle is equal to the square of the length of the longest side which is the hypotenuse please take note of this sentence kindly take note of this sentence kindly take note of this so the Pythagoras theorem the Pythagoras theorem is a theorem it states that what the sum of the squares of the shorter sides is equal to what the square of the what of the longer what side. The sum of the squares of the shorter sides is equal, is always equal to the length of the what the square of the length of the longer side. So the sum of the squares of the length of the two shorter sides of a right angle triangle is equal to the square of the length of the what? longest side, which is what? Which is the hypotenuse. So the longest side is the what? Is the hypotenuse. So I'll draw the plane figure very soon so that you know the hypotenuse. Then you know the two shorter sides. Now let's proceed. The theorem states that if the above triangle, so I'll draw a triangle, then you see if the above triangle, that's a right angle triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the shorter sides. So let me clean this place. Let's see. So I have here A, B, then C. So the Pythagoras here. This is a right angled triangle. You have the right angle triangle here. That's a 90 degrees, right angle, 90 degrees. So so a right angle triangle is an it's a triangle whose angle is what is up to what 90 degrees. So it's a triangle, it's a type of triangle whose measure is up to what 90 degrees, or whose measure is 90 degrees. So that's a right angled triangle. That's a right angled triangle. So now here. The theorem states that if the above triangle is a right angle triangle, then a squared, so that means a squared, this squared, 
b squared plus b squared equals c squared where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the shorter sides so a and b are what the two shorter what, sides and where the right angle always check where the right angle what faces the side then that means this side becomes what the hypotenuse so i can draw a triangle then i'll place my right angle here so it means that where this right angle faces this side becomes what the hypotenuse so always you have to check where what the hypotenuse is so where the right angle what faces then that means that length or that side becomes what the hypotenuse please do you understand that let me go over again the theorem states that if the above triangle is a right angle triangle then a squared plus b squared equals what c squared why is this so we have this from the what the theorem it states that what the sum of the squares of the length of the two shorter sides this that's the two shorter sides these are the two shorter sides that's the two shorter sides so a squared b squared the sum of the squares now listen sum of the squares squares of the sum they are different sum of the squares squares of the sum they are different now squares of the sum it means that a plus b all squared squares of what the sum so this is the square of what the sum the sum of the squares the sum of the squares the sum of the squares so if you find for a squared b squared then you sum but for square of the sum, it means you have to find what the sum first before you what you square the result. Please, are you getting it? All right. So sum of the squares is the right expression to what to use. So please take note of this properly. A squared plus b squared is always equal to what c squared. So a squared plus b squared is always equal to what c what squared. So please take note of this theorem here. So for any right angled triangle, it obeys this Pythagoras theorem. You have to understand this Pythagoras theorem very well because when you go to the senior high school level, you do this into details. That's a trigonometry, the triangle measurement. Trigonometry. So here is the right angled triangle. Right angled triangle. So Pythagoras theorem always states that the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is always equal or is equal to what the square of the what the longest what side. So please take me this into your memory so that whenever they drop a right angle triangle for you to solve you have to locate you have to first locate what the the what the hypotenuse first where the right angle faces is where you locate what the hypotenuse this right angle is opposite to the side here so it means that this side is what hypotenuse Please take note. This right angle faces this side or is opposite to this side. So it means that what this side becomes what the hypotenuse. So please take note of this theorem here. It's very, very simple. If you listen to simple instructions, you'll be very, very cool with this topic. All right let's proceed so now let's see something here let's 
So on the right angle triangle. Don't mind if the ships are not the same. They are drawn to scale. It's drawn to scale, so please forgive me for that. So now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five squares here. One, two, three, four, five. So that means the total squares here is what? 25. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the total squares here is what? 16, right? Four times four is 16. Yeah, five times five is what? 25. Because they're on the row, right? Then here, one, two, three, one, two, three. So three times three is what? Nine. So now here, watch here. Let's see whether this is true. Let's use Pythagoras theorem to solve this. So I have my right angle here. So it means that where this right angle fits is, or where this right angle is opposite to this side, then that means this side is what? Is the hypotenuse. Do you understand that? So it means that for Pythagoras theorem, it states that the sum of the squares, the sum of the squares, the sum of the squares on the what? On the two shorter what? sides is always equal to what? To the square on the what? At the what? The longer what? Side. The sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is equal to what? The square on the longer what? side here. All right, so it means that this square, three squared plus four squared equals what? Five what? squared. So three squared gives me what? Three times three. Then plus 4 squared gives me what? 4 times 4. Then 5 squared gives me what? 5 times 5. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. Plus 4 times 4 gives me what? 16. Because 5 times 5 gives me what? 25. Now, 9 plus 16 is what? 25. So 25 equals what? 25. So it means that this statement is what? True. See, it's very simple. So it means that this three, four, five, they correspond or they obey the Pythagoras theorem. So when you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, you see they tally with what the hypotenuse was, squares there. Please, are you getting what I'm teaching here? All right, so this is what? A clear understanding of the Pythagoras theorem. So always know that what? Or you can see that the square on the hypotenuse is equal to what? The sum of the squares on the other words, two sides. Very, very simple. 
the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides or the sum of the squares on the other two sides equals what? the square on the what? hypotenuse that's the longest what? side please are you getting it it's very very simple all right so that's that so let's start with an example so let's start the ball rolling So example, example, find the length is of the right angled triangle. So this is how the question is being set for Pythagoras here. So find the length AC. So you should calculate for this length AC of the right angle triangle ABC with AB equals 3 centimeters, BC equals 4 centimeters. Now, the right angle is at this point B. You have to take note. 90 degrees is at this point what? B. So I can say that where angle A, B, C equals what? 90 degrees. Because that's the what? The angle is the what? Is the letter in the what? Metal. Please take note. You've done plain geometry. So you know what we are talking about here. Alright. So now, how best can we solve this? I have to first locate my hypotenuse. Where is my hypotenuse? Now, I will check where the 90 degrees is. We said that where the 90 degrees faces or where the 90 degrees is opposite to the side, then that in that side becomes what? The high book what? Tenus. Alright, so it means that if I want to solve this question, I have to first quote what? My Pythagoras word, theory. We state that what? the square on this hypotenuse so i can say that the distance from this point a to this point c so i can say that the length of ac so that means the square of this hypotenuse must be equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides the sum of the squares on the other two sides the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So the square on the hypotenuse must be equal to what? The sum of the squares on the other two sides. So from point A to point B, the distance is what? 3. So the length of AB or what? Squared. Plus the length of BC or what? Squared. So the length of AC or squared, we don't know. So AC all squared equals the length of AB is 3 and squared plus BC is 4 squared. So it means that the length of AC all squared equals 3 squared is 3 times 3 then plus 4 squared is 4 times 4. So it means that the length of AC equals 9 plus 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 plus 9 is 25 because the length of AC all squared, sorry, all squared. So now, if I want to find for the length of AC all squared, I have to take the square root of what? Both sides of the equation. So I have the length of AC all squared. So I have my square root here. Then I have my square root here also. Note that when square root 
is coming, it brings what? Plus or minus. It brings plus or minus. When you drop a square root, it brings what? Plus or minus. So when they ask you what is the square root of 25, the square root of 25 is positive 5 or negative 5. That's a good answer. It's a perfect answer. The square root of 25 is what? Positive or negative 5. Either positive 5 or negative 5. So now I can denote that the length of AC equals what? Plus or minus what? 5. Plus or minus 5 means what? It can be what? Positive 5 or what? Negative what? 5. But note something here. With this question, we are talking of what? Distances. Length. So here, distances length it means that we cannot get what a negative what distance we only have what positive what distances here so now since we don't have negative distances we will forget about what the negative five and we focus on what the positive five so therefore the length of AC is what, five so since we don't have negative distances we will focus on the what the positive distance please are we here do we understand that all right so this is how this question can be solved so please take note of the perfect squares the perfect squares perfect squares usually start from one but it can start from zero because square root of zero is what zero because zero times zero gives what zero so square root of zero is what zero square root of one is what one 1 times 1 is what? 1. Square root of 4 is what? 2. Because 2 times 2 is what? 4. So perfect squares, they start from 1, 4, you go to 16, 25, come to 49, 36, they are there. They are each 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 5, 400. There are so many square roots. There are so many perfect squares, sorry. There are so many perfect squares. Or they can call them square numbers. Square numbers. Square numbers. So please take note of that. So learn them very, very well because with these questions, you'll be getting perfect squares inside. So you can reach a place and ask you what's the square root of um, 2 to 5. If you don't know, then I'm sorry. What's the square root of 169? What's the square root of 289? You'll be, you'll be, you'll be stuck. So please, please. Please. And most of the times they drop questions under perfect squares. Yeah, here. So you can get to uh, the square root of 25. We all know that 25 is what? It's a perfect square. So square root of 25 is what? 5. Because 5 times 5 gives what? 25. Alright. So now, please take note. Now, if you reach a point, then you get the answer to the square root of 10. Since you don't use calculator, you don't worry yourself breaking this because this is a set you reach there at a senior high level they will teach you so square root of 10 is a set it's an irrational number so please take note of that don't worry yourself to break this down you don't use calculator but if you know that you can break it down then that one is up to you but don't worry yourself they will not penalize you this so square root of 10 then you have to end the square root of 10 but you know your perfect square when you reach here and you don't write the exact answer for me and you stop here then that means mm, i can penalize you for this so please take note of that so please listen and adhere to the instructions i've just said here so please it will help you very very well in your doing of this super work here with a right angle triangle with a pythagoras theorem so please take note of the little instructions here all right let's proceed with another example so i'm solving three examples so i'm left with two examples to go then i give you questions to try at your free time your own free time try questions so 
So now let's see. The question says find x in the diagram. Find x in the diagram here. Sorry, our last question we just saw here, we had five centimeters. We are supposed to bring units as this, units, units, please. So if there is no unit there, like this one, they brought what unit, right? The unit is what centimeters. So if they didn't bring any thing of this nature, then you have to write this word for the units. This is very, 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 very important. All right. Let's proceed. Now, find x in the diagram. We have this plane figure. That's a right-angled triangle. You first locate your hypotenuse. This is very, very important. You solving right angle triangle questions that's the pythagoras theorem questions it's very very important in locating your hypotenuse first so now i told you that how do you locate your hypotenuse how do you locate your hypotenuse where the 90 degrees what faces where the 90 degrees faces or where the 90 degrees is what opposite towards to this side then that means this side becomes what the hypotenuse so where this 90 degrees face is, then that means this side is my longest side. That's the hypotenuse. So I believe you know how to locate what the hypotenuse. Do you understand that? All right. So now I can say that now I know my hypotenuse. I cannot proceed in solving this question. So it means that I have my hypotenuse here. So the hypotenuse is what? 10 centimeters. Now the shorter sides are what? X centimeters and what? 8 what? Centimeters. So now Pythagoras theorem states that what? The square on the hypotenuse is equal to what? The sum of the squares on the what? Other two sides. The square on the hypotenuse. So this is my hypotenuse. So the square on this hypotenuse is equal to what? the sum of the squares on the other what? two sides. So now solution. So the squares on the other two sides. So now let's start. So I'll start with what? My hypotenuse. So what now it becomes what? 10 squared, which must be equal to what? The sum of the squares on the what? other two sides or the shorter what? sides. So I have x squared plus what? 8 squared. 10 squared gives what? 10 times 10 equals x squared. We maintain plus 8 squared means 8 times 8. So 10 times 10, which is what? 100 equals x squared plus 8 times 8, which is what? 64. So I group like things. I have 100 minus 64 equals x squared. So 100 minus 64 is 36 equals x squared. So now I have x squared equals 36. It's the same thing. The left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Likewise, the right hand side is equal, also equal to the left hand side. So now, what, how would I get my x? You have to take what square root on both sides of what the equation. So now. I have my square root, so I have x equals what? 6 what? centimeters. Don't forget to bring your centimeters. It's very, very important. So, the value of x or the distance for x is what? 6 centimeters. With this, we are dealing with what? We are dealing with length here, distance. So, we are pleading with you that when you are done with the answer, Kindly bring your what? Your units. It's very, very what? Important. So please check the solution. Check the solution for this question. Very, very important. Check the solution.
So if you get a question of this nature, this is how you saw the question, please. When you get a question of this nature, this is how you go about the question. You will not say that, okay, this is my hypothesis. No, 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 no. First, you get your hypothesis. Where the 90 degrees faces? Where is the 90 degrees facing the side? Where is it? Where is it facing? It is facing this side. So, okay, then that means this side is my own hypotenuse. That's the longest what, side, the longest side of this what, right angled what, triangle. So, please take notes. It's very, very important. So, please, another word for length is what? Distance. And another name for distance is what? Magnitude. So, either they can use length, distance, or magnitude or modulus so length distance magnitude modulus they are the same so when you hear any word as modulus don't be afraid it's the same thing as what find the length you can tell you that find the modulus is the same thing as finding what the distance so they can tell you that find the magnitude is the same thing as what finding for what the distance so don't be Confused on that, please, please, please. They are very, very simple. So, state the question and check the first thing that's what the high put things. The high, the high put things. Steady the first thing on this question that's the high put things. It's very, very important. Very, very, very important. All right, so let me show my last example. My last example. Then I give you exercise to try on your own free time. Please do all to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Massa Tutorials. Subscribe so that you'll be the first person to get my JHS Mathematics videos. All right, so let me show my last question. All right. All right. Let's see this question. Um. Uh, So this is how the question is drawn to us. An isosceles triangle has equal sides, 10 centimeters, and a base 12 centimeters long. Find the altitude of the triangle. Find the altitude of the triangle. So now, let's see how best we can solve this question. An isosceles triangle. You know that an isosceles triangle is a type of triangle with two equal sides. And you have the base angles to are what equal. So it has what two equal sides. So I have a triangle. I have a triangle with two equal sides. And the base angles to are what equal. The base angle. So base angle here x, then that means this place also is what x, but we are not into that for now. Alright, so we have an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a type of triangle in which two of its sides are what 
equal so please let's take note of that so if i have here to be l then that means here is also what l then that all right so they said what an isosceles triangle has equal size 10 centimeters so it means that here is what 10 centimeters likewise this place is also what? 10 centimeters and the base 12 centimeters you know the base of the triangle which is what 12 centimeters find the altitude what's the altitude that's the actual height the perpendicular height of the triangle that's the perpendicular height the actual height so another name for actual height or the perpendicular height is what altitude so this is the word altitude that's the perpendicular height of the what of the triangle so now we can see that this triangle or this line let's take i have a triangle this is the line right that's the altitude the perpendicular height now a line is drawn from the apex that's the vertex right the apex to touch what the base of this triangle here so it means that this line because this is an isosceles triangle it means that this line is dividing the triangle into two equal parts so it will divide this triangle into two equal parts so we can what we can recall that we have a word called what line of what symmetry line of symmetry so it means that an isosceles triangle has one line of what symmetry which is the what the line there the perpendicular line this the perpendicular line this line is the what line of symmetry it divides the triangle or this plane shape or this polygon don't forget polygon because it's bounded with what straight edges or straight sides so now this is a polygon so this line is a line of symmetry it divides this triangle into what? two equal what? parts so this triangle has what one line of what symmetry it has only one line of what symmetry so now let's solve so if this line divides this triangle into two equal parts then it means that the base two it will divide the base into what two equal parts so it means that two divides 12 is what six two divides 12 is six or 12 divided by two is what six so i have here to be six centimeters then here is what six centimeters don't forget that I said another name for altitude is what height or perpendicular what height or the actual height. So that means here is what 90 degrees. So how do you find for H? So now we can draw another figure as that. So here will be 90, here will be H, here will be 6 centimeters, then here will be 10 centimeters. Please are you here? So now how do you solve this? We have the right angle what here. So where the right angle is facing, then we can locate what our hypotenuse. Do you understand that? So this 10 is my what? hypotenuse. So now, how do we solve for? So now it becomes what? A right angled triangle. A right angled triangle. Because its measure is what? 90 degrees. So now a right angled triangle. Now, how do we solve for a right angle triangle? Don't forget that Pythagoras theorem states that what the square on the hypotenuse, because we are about to use what Pythagoras theorem to find for what the value of what angle what h. Do you understand that? All right. So the square on this hypotenuse, so 10 squared equals what a squared plus what c squared. So 10 squared gives what 10 times 10 equals a squared gives what a squared plus c squared is what six times six so this one is 100 equals a squared plus what 36 so 100 you group like 10 100 minus 36 equals what a squared 100 minus 36 is what 64 equals a squared so what do you do to find for each you have to take what the square root of both sides of the equation so here becomes that it becomes so I have h equals what square root of 64 is 
eight. Yeah, it's eight. So eight what? Centimeters. So that's the perpendicular height of this plane figure. Or that's the altitude of the triangle. So eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. So let me give you a question to try. The next time we meet on the other video, we talk more about the Pythagoras theorem. All right. So please look at it, copy it very carefully. All right. So let me give you my exercise to do. So find x in the diagrams. So one, we have this diagram here. Twelve is sixteen. Two, we have this diagram here. Y. So here is x and here is x. So x thirty-two forty. Uh, do you have this diagram here? You have x six four. And question four. You have this diagram here. Have four. Then you have three. All right. So these are the questions. So you have to find for x here. You have to find for x in the diagram below. You have to find for x in the diagram below. All right. So thanks so much for watching this video. Please do all to subscribe to my channel, Master Tutorials, so that you be the first person to get my video. Thank you so much. We shall meet on the next video. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.